got to see what you see. You are doing a great work in me. I've decided I can't stand still. No, you have given me purpose. All my, all my heart is yours. to serve you. serve you you have given me a job to do i wanna love the world just like you yeah you have given me purpose oh my all oh, my heart is yours Hey guys, welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about responsibility. Well, we'll take a look at this story within another story. Think we should stop looking around? Nah, we're having a humping good time. We really need to start the show now. On it. Sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry I'm late. I was riding my bike and there were like six potholes and what on earth? G'day, mate! Wait, cinnamon toast! Don't scare me like that! What is all of this? Well, as you know, this week we're talking about responsibility, which is showing you can be trusted with what's expected of you. I see. And since you were running late, I decided to do the responsible thing by setting up for the show. Very sweet. But why the balloon animals? Walk with me. You see, I have recently taken up the fine art of balloon animal re. And since I'm clearly awesome at it, I felt like it was my responsibility to share it with the world. Wait, you made all these? Technically, the guy who's teaching me made most of them, but I did make a few, such as... <sighs> The boa constrictor. The cobra. And my very first creation, the Alaskan bulwark. True work of art. Thanks. Now, what is your favorite animal? <gasps> Sumatran rhino. Or a dog. One dog coming up. And voila, one balloon dog just for you. This is awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your crazy new hobby with us. Yeah, no problem. You know, 
Now that I have a balloon dog, I should probably feed her. How do you feed a balloon dog? Glad you asked. Let's make it. Today on how to feed your balloon animal. We're doing a little experiment called jumping goo. How can you make goo jump? So glad you asked. For this experiment, you'll need one fourth cup of cornstarch, one fourth cup of vegetable oil, a bowl for mixing, a measuring cup, a spoon, and one balloon animal. A regular balloon would work too. First, mix the oil and cornstarch together in a bowl. Sebastian? On it. That's some down home cooking right here. Next, take your balloon animal and rub it on your head. While you're here. Still better than when I hit that bush after the potholes. Mm. Now, take a spoonful of your mixture and very slowly move it close to the balloon without touching it. And voila! All thanks to a little thing called static electricity. Isn't that where you rub your feet on a carpet really fast and shock people? Yes, but there's more to it. When you rub a balloon on your hair, negatively charged electrons from your hair rub onto the balloon. This gives the balloon a negative charge. But what about the jumping goo? Well, the cornstarch in the goo we made has a positive charge. Negative charges attract positive charges, so the positively charged goo jumps onto the negatively charged balloon. And that's how you feed your adorable balloon puppy. Wow, thanks so much for sharing that experiment. Hey, thanks for sharing your balloon animals. And speaking of sharing, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Luke, one of the four gospels that tells the story of Jesus. During his time on earth, Jesus traveled from town to town, teaching people about God. Often, he told parables to show people what God is like. Parables are short stories about everyday objects and familiar situations, like breaking bread, planting seeds, or hunting for a lost coin. Jesus was a master storyteller. His stories were easy to remember. They made people think for themselves and make connections. And that's where our story begins. Take it away. Hey guys, I'm Padma. I hope you're ready because today's story is a storied story within another story. Don't worry, I'll help you keep track. One day, Jesus was speaking to a crowd of people, teaching them about God. Suddenly, a man called out from the crowd. Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family property with me. Friend, who made me a judge or umpire between you? Watch out. Be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. Now here's where Jesus did something brilliant. Instead of giving a quick answer, Jesus used a powerful word picture. It went something like this. Once there was a rich man whose land produced a very large crop. Sir, we're set to bring in a bumper crop this year. Wow, look at all this food. I'm going to make a fortune off this. Harvest the crop at once. Uh, we're working on that, but... There's a problem. A problem? You don't have enough barn space to store all your grain. I was thinking, well, you could share. Share? But it's all mine. Well, yes, uh, yes, it is. <gasps> I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I can store all the grain for myself. Oh. Yay me! <laughs> Now I have plenty of grain stored away for years to come. I can take it easy, relax, eat, drink, and party all night long. <laughs> but as the rich man was thinking these thoughts, God spoke to him. You foolish man. Tonight I will take your life away from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? No! 
this story. That's how it will be for whoever stores things away for themselves, but is not rich in the sight of God. Oh. Hmm. It's okay to have nice things, but our stuff should never get in the way of loving God and loving people. Everything we have comes from God. And one of the best ways we can show God's love is by sharing what we've been given. The end. Two stories for the price of one. Good deal. Sometimes the best deal is to give instead of holding on to things yourself. So, what's our part in the story? Whether you have a little or a lot, it all belongs to God. We have the amazing job of using what we've been given to show God's love to others. Like sharing your cookies from lunch. Ooh, or letting someone use your hoodie when they're cold. It might even be saving part of your allowance or birthday money to buy food for people who need it. Yeah, there's this little food pantry box right by my library. Anyone who can give food puts it in the box and then anyone who needs it can get it. That's awesome. And we can share a lot more than just our stuff. Things like our time. You can share your time by choosing to read to your little brother instead of playing your own game. If you got a big backyard, you can share it with your friends and all play some soccer. You can even share your story. That seems a little big. Well, when you tell your friends about the good things and the hard things in your life and how God has helped you, it can encourage them too. Who knew we had so much to share? I love it. Thanks for sharing your time with me. See you next time. Bye. So here's the thing, share what you have. Your stuff, your time, even your story. Speaking of, want to share with me how to make an Alaskan bulwark? It would be my pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you, See you next, next time. time. So I can do it like that. Kind of pull back. I don't, I don't know if I, I don't think I get it. So they really come to you? Yeah. yeah, you just make an appointment, give them your address, and it's a mobile service. They show up and they'll cut your hair or if you, or do your nails or whatever you want. Huh. Weird. No, it's cool. They'll even do like aromatherapy or they have this thing called a massage bath in, in their bath and spa package. I'm sorry, did you say bath? Yeah, that was weird. I, I didn't want anything to do with that, so I didn't get that package. But they did offer fancy pom-poms. Woo! So I said, yeah, I'll take that. You said yes to fancy pom-poms? Well, yeah, who wouldn't want a personalized cheerleader cheering you on while mm. you're getting your hair cut? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I said, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> what else do they do? Uh, de-matting <laughs> and, and de-shedding. I don't, I don't think I need any of that, do you? <laughs> you realize these are dog groomers, right? <laughs> <laughs> dog groomers. <laughs> Compost. No, that would make the cage-free drying make more sense. Top dog groomers, at your service. You didn't realize from the name? I, I thought it was a top dog. I thought it was like really, a, I was a cool guy. I was like, hey dog, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> no! Hi everyone, I'm Brandon. Yes! <laughs> and this is John, and you're watching The So-and-So Show. Right? Yes, hi, welcome. <laughs> so, you got some good news? Good, good. Great news, Brandon, great! Great. <laughs> <laughs> Do you wanna share? No. Oh, uh, share the news. Yeah, I thought you meant share what I was getting. But, that, no, but uh, my great aunt is moving and she's downsizing. Oh, is she giving you some really great stuff like a, an espresso machine or a recliner? Even better. Oh, a mid-century modern TV console complete with a full collection of board games? No, but close. Tell me. Her collection of miniature cat figurines. Oh, what? Oh, I bet that's them being delivered right now. Come on in. 
Hey. Oh, hey, Cassie. <laughs> Come on in. Everybody, this is my cousin, Cassie. What's up? Hey, what brings you on the show today, Cassie? Well, I have some news. Oh, I have news, too. Great Aunt Hilda? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what'd you get? I bet you mine is way better. <laughs> Doubtful. <laughs> She's giving me her collection of cat figurines. What? I told you mine was better. Wait, no, 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 that's not it, because she is giving me her collection of cat figurines. <laughs> Wait, seriously? What are we gonna do? There's only one way to solve this. No, we can't play rock, paper, scissors for it. Fine. Uh, just so I understand, this is all over cat figurines. Duh. Duh. Can you sell them for a lot of money or something? Why would we do that? Uh, they're cat figurines, Brandon. They're incredibly rare. Yeah, I, 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 adorable. Colorful, lifelike. They're cats and they're mine and I want them and they're mine. No, they're mine. <sighs> okay, why don't you just share them? <sighs> All right, I was just trying to help. You know, Cassie, I deserve these cats. What? Yeah, I know, because I work hard. I have a show. And I have other figurines that could be the cat's friends. Oh, huh? I love cats. You don't even like cats that much. That is true. Brandon! You know, listen, I, I did not want to have to do this. But you leave me no choice. <gasps> what is that? Aunt Hilda gave it to me a year ago. And when I visited, she said, and I quote, one day, sweetie, I'll give you the entire set. Well, then she lied because she told me that all of these figurines were mine! What? No, it's mine! Mine, mine. It's, it's, mine. 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 it's, it's just... Mine. It's Bible story time! Hey, everybody! Hey! Sorry about your dilemma, John and Cassie. Thanks. Thanks. I think our story today may help you out. It says in the Bible which one of us gets the figurines? Um, no. In today's story, Jesus was talking to a big crowd of people. People often gathered around him, wanting to learn from him. On this particular day, one man in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family property with me. Jesus replied to him, Friend, who made me a judge or umpire between you? Then Jesus said to the crowd, watch out, be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. But Jesus didn't stop there. One of his favorite ways to teach people was by telling them stories. So he told them a story of a rich man whose land had just produced a very large crop. Ah, oh, it's good to be rich. Wow, my land has produced so many crops this year what am I gonna do? I don't have enough space to store them all. Are you looking for a place to store all of your crops? Yeah. Then follow me. Real quick, that sounds like Looney Larry. He pops in from time to time. Jesus definitely never mentioned anything about Looney Larry or about infomercials. But maybe he'll help us out with our story today. Looney Larry here, and I've got just the thing for you. Say goodbye to small barns with just enough space and reasonable storing options. Say hello to Looney Larry's line of big barns. Oh, boo hoo hoo. My small barn is the worst. It's old and boring. If I keep this barn, I have to share my crops with all the other people instead of having room to store them all for myself because they're mine. It's time to tear down that small barn and buy bigger barns. We've got you covered with choices of all colors, shapes, and of course, sizes. Big, bigger, and extra super big. Don't hesitate, you need this. Would, would I? I? Would I? Wow, that's a great idea. Just tear this small barn down and build something bigger. I'll have plenty of grain stored away for years and I'll be able to take life easy. Score! 
In Jesus' story, the rich man decided to tear down the barns he had and build bigger ones so that he could store his crops and live life easy. And then... But wait, there's more! I don't think... Why stop at a barn? We've got mansions, warehouses, and even mid-16th century castles! You can fit everything in here! And I mean everything! Would I love... I've got some building to do. I need to buy it all. And there's even more. Really? What else? Actually, that's enough. Oh. oh, man! After he built the bigger barns, God told the rich man that he was foolish. God said, tonight I will take your life away from you. Then, who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Wait, what? Huh? After his story, Jesus told the crowd, that is how it will be for whoever stores things away for themselves, but is not rich in the sight of God. Jesus taught the people that it is more important to be rich in God's eyes than to have a lot of stuff for yourself. What do you think? Does that help with your cat problem? Uh, as much as I want the whole collection to myself, yes, I have to admit that is helpful. That's fair. It's human nature to want things for yourself. But Jesus taught us how to be generous and how to love God and others with the things we have. Sharing what we have is one of our responsibilities as Jesus followers. That's amazing. Mm. Definitely. So do you want to share the figurine collection? And you take half, I take half? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? I want to give some to Grandma because she really <gasps> loves cats. What do you think? You are right. <laughs> she loves them. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looks like you two have the hang of it. I'll see you later. Thanks. See ya. I'm, I'm really relieved both of you figured that out. Mm. Me too. Oh, I need to clean off my bookshelf so I can make space for these little kitties. I'm so excited. <laughs> I know. Hey, hey, before you go, can you help me out with something? Of course. Okay, great. Reveal the question. What do you have that you can share? Oh, good question. Yeah, yeah, it could be, uh, you know, it could be money if you've got any saved up. Or it could be stuff like a good book mm -hmm. or a sweater or cat. Figurines. Oh. <laughs> you. <laughs> you can also share your time uh, by volunteering to help someone mm. or, or share your talents with people. Everyone has different strengths. You could be great at something someone else could really use help at. Yeah. And I have to say from personal experience within the last two minutes, that sharing definitely feels better than trying to keep it all to yourself. Totally. Mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah. Don't take our word for it. It's your turn. I'm Brandon. I'm Cassie. And I'm John, and this was the so-and-so show, and he's a kitty. He's a cute little kitty. Yeah, little little scrubby, little purr, little ears. It's a kitty. <laughs> it's a kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's more. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Did you know that the word homeowner has meow in the middle? Home meowner? <laughs> <laughs> Would I lie? Pop dog. No. Arf. No, no dogs here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> No! I'm not here! <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, that hurts the back. <laughs>